You'll see some footage playing in the background of this video. That footage is from my game Drawn Down Abyss. I'm on devlog number 3 now, and this time I started off by drawing an absolutely disgusting tree background thing. I didn't like the colors, the trees kinda looked funky in the background, so I just kinda got rid of that. But I didn't want it to all go to waste, so I cut out the trees and kept the grass and used that for one layer of my parallax background. After that, I decided to draw the main background, which was going to be a mountain background because it turns out I can't do trees very well. Also, it doesn't make too much sense because the scale gets weird with platformers. For these mountains, I actually referenced a game called Nitra since I'm very bad at drawing backgrounds. And if you want to learn art, it's really good to reference other people's work. That's generally how you learn. And then you can create your own style by mixing together things you do know and just kind of things you come up with. Although coming up with a whole style from the ground up isn't really the best idea and doesn't work too well. After I drew these mountains, I also drew a sky image, which is just kind of a gradient, but pixel art and once I put it all together it actually looks pretty good so I decided to not touch it anymore and leave it at that. I'll probably add some more stuff in the future though but for the time being I'm just gonna leave it as is. I mentioned this in my last video but I wanted to add some particles to this game. I used the same strategy I used in my game Drawn Down Abyss which is visible in the background right now and I made the leaves fall from the grass and I had plans to add it so that it fell from trees and stuff like that which you will hear about in a moment here. So one of the things I wanted to do with the particles was make them interact with the wind along with pretty much everything else in this game. It makes the environment feel a whole lot more real. That wasn't hard to do, they already had movement and stuff. The wind just modifies the velocity on the x-axis depending on the wind speed and depending on if the particles in the wind gust or not. So really that's not too hard to do. The other thing I added to particles which is kind of a falling back and forth type of thing. What I did here was I implemented a sine wave that modifies the x velocity of the particle. That makes it kind of sway back and forth in the wind or whatever. Looks much more natural for leaves. You don't want to use the same input for that sine value for all particles or else it's going to look weird. You always want to have your visuals on different sine waves when you hook them up to them or on different parts of the sine wave. Preferably they should be working on different scales so they don't last the same duration. And sine waves are really going to be a thing I do a lot here. That's actually how I handled the water collisions. I did a sine wave of impact. That's how I did the grass and that's how I did the particles and you'll see that's how I do the tree. So next up I spent a decent amount of time drawing a tree and I mean a decent amount of time it was like two and a half hours or something. I spent a lot of time on that trunk and then I, it took a bit to nail down the tree style. I took the style from a person on Twitter I follow that goes by Trixalized or Trix. He draws really good clouds and I, my style was kind of based on that, but then I also adapted it to be more vibrant and pop out a bit more. So here comes the fun part of this devlog. I wanted to make the tree have leaves that move in the wind. So my first idea was to just kind of add some circles on there and move those around. But I quickly realized I didn't even implement this at all, that that wouldn't work because it would just look weird having clearly visible circles. And you're really forcing a style when you do that. I came up with a couple mediocre ideas for how to do it without too much work. And eventually I gave up and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to animate it. Before I animated it, I went and just had some food or something and then I got lazy and I think I took a nap. Then after I woke up, I'm like, wait, hold on. What if I warp the tree? But instead of just warping an auto-generated layout for the leaves. I can place points to determine what parts get warped. So I made this image with a bunch of red dots on it to mark all the points that I want warped to create the leaf effect. And by the way, this warping is just cutting out a sub-portion of my tree, applying a mask to it to give it a certain shape, which is a circle, and then blitting that somewhere else or rendering that somewhere else. So it looks like I've warped it a bit. 
or moved something around. So using this method, I can place my leaves in a specific spot, but I don't have to animate them. I can just generate the animations dynamically. And much like I did for the particles, I move the leaves by using sine waves. The X movement and the Y movement of the leaves are on sine waves of different scales. So it doesn't like look like it's just going in a circle or something like that. So it looks like it's moving around kind of randomly, but there is a pattern and it does kind of look natural. On top of that, I wanted to set it up so that the wind speed affected the leaf movement. So I just increased the rate of movement in that sine wave for that wind speed. An interesting challenge here is that I didn't wanna have to store individual position or like just phase in the sine wave information for each leaf. So I had to come up with a system to avoid doing that. So I ended up storing it for the whole tree and then using that to keep track of the position. The reason why I can't just calculate it on the spot entirely is because the wind speeds would change how fast I would want things to move. And if I used a global timer for the offset in that sine wave, changing the ratio of how much that was applied would cause jumps in the leaf position. So I had to have kind of a memory for the leaves, but I didn't want all the leaves to have memory. So I just gave each tree a memory and the effect of the wind speed is determined by the location of the tree, not the location of the individual leaves. And since the trees aren't super big, it's not super noticeable when the wind applies at the leaves all at once. And the last thing I did that I'm covering in this devlog is I added particles to the trees so that the trees drop their own leaves. And I also set it up so that if the wind blows, you'll see more particles coming from the trees, which I thought was cool. Anyways, that's pretty much it for this devlog. If you're interested in my projects, you can check out my Twitter or just keep watching these devlogs. I'll probably release this project, I'm hoping for free. It, it depends, I don't know on itch when i finish the basic version it is going to be a game and then i'll probably take that project a bit further if people like it and i'll turn it into like a full-on rpg type thing an action rpg if you got any questions i've got a discord server with a channel dedicated to questions and i hope i'll see you guys in the next video